A short time ago, an American airplane dropped one bomb on Hiroshima. That bomb has more power than 20,000 tons of TNT. With this bomb, we have now added a new and revolutionary increase in destruction. It is an atomic bomb. It is a harnessing of the basic power of the universe. The force from which the sun draws its power has been loosed against those who brought war to the Far East. In the back when times, war was coming. Not war like the petty tribal skirmishes in southwestern Utah and throughout the Midwest. Not war like the clash between the bull and the bear over the Hoover Dam or the power struggles in Boston, or the occupation of the tattered remains of D.C. They say war never changes. But in spite of all the warning signs, the evaporation of fossil fuels and rampant starvation across the globe, nobody was prepared for the scale of the war that was bubbling under the surface. On October 23, 2077, at 9.47 a.m. Eastern Time, the world cracked open. Nuclear fire rained down from the skies above as nuclear bomb after nuclear bomb hammered the earth. The Great War, humanity's greatest and most terrible accomplishment, engulfed the world in a radioactive inferno for just two hours and humanity was wiped out. Well, almost. Humans are the smartest animals on the planet and while some were using that brain power to annihilate our species, others used that power to preserve our species. Rumors circulate of an eccentric billionaire in Nevada who predicted that the Great War was inevitable 15 years before the bombs dropped and spent his fortune preparing for this eventuality. Not only working to preserve himself, but the city he loved, Las Vegas. He was a laughing stock of his peers at the time lambasted and lampooned in all the swanky parties and magazines. But on that day, when 77 warheads came to demolish his city, he, well, that's a story for another day. For as wealthy and powerful as this billionaire was, his mind was of a singular purpose, and there were other men out there with more ambition, men whose vision expanded beyond preserving and controlling one tiny corner of a war-blasted country. These men, whose names have been lost so far to the ravages of time, came together to found a company, a company that would inevitably and irreversibly shape the course of humanity for hundreds of years. And this company was vault Tech. If you're listening to this, you've likely seen the handiwork of vault Tech yourself. They built the vaults, the giant complexes constructed out of reinforced concrete several feet thick, embedded in the sides of mountains or deep underground, and sealed shut with giant steel doors. Either you're one of the lucky or perhaps unlucky few who survived the war due to their handiwork. Either that or you've taken refuge from the savage burn of radiation storms inside their halls or you've seen a stranger wearing a blue jumpsuit with a number on the back out in the wilds. It's not fully known precisely how many vaults were built. Every vault constructed by vault Tech is numbered, and while our archives are incomplete, records show numbers as high as 118. While only 41 vaults are known at the moment, new records are discovered every day in computers buried under radioactive ash. Some even say there are vaults numbering as high as 700, but official corroborations are unconfirmed, as all known references to vaults higher than 118 are within vault tech training simulations. The purpose of the vaults on the surface was simple, to provide a safe haven from the ravages of war for humanity to survive in, so that they may one day return to the surface and reform society. Unlike the cheaper, single-occupancy, Pulowski preservation shelters that dot New England that did little more than shield you from shrapnel, vaults were to be fully enclosed, self-sufficient towns where tens or even hundreds of people could live. Hydroponics and UV lamps provided all the vitamins and minerals you could need by growing fresh produce. Advanced water filters and recycling systems provided fresh water to residents. There were common areas, cafeterias, schools, doctor's offices, and recreation, weapons, and construction equipment. 
everything a human needs to not only live, but to thrive. Vaults were even to be equipped with a coveted Garden of Eden creation kit, which contains all the seeds, fertilizer, and equipment one would need to restart society once the Earth above cooled to a dull radioactive glow. This mandate to preserve humanity against the onslaught of nuclear terror was encapsulated in vault Tech's corporate slogan, revolutionizing safety for an uncertain future. Construction costs for one vault cost over half a trillion pre-war dollars, and entry into them wasn't cheap. Exact costs of entry are unknown, but waiting lists were long, and many occupants had to win a lottery to get in or be a service member of the armed forces. The founding members of vault Tech were among the few to see the inevitable on the horizon, and they took action to both profit and take control of the ever-rising tensions and fear of the coming apocalypse. And while most people were skeptical, many embraced the perception of safety that vault Tech offered them, a safe haven away from rad scorpions, super mutants, and rabid dissident tribes. The vault wait lists filled up with names of people looking to preserve themselves, and vault Tech gladly took their money. But they were all of them deceived, for lurking under that friendly motto, revolutionizing safety for an uncertain future, lay a secret agenda. vault Tech didn't just want to get rich, they wanted far, far more, and they got it. And thousands of humans, humans who were just looking for a safe place, hopped out of the nuclear frying pan and into the vile, deceitful fire of vault Tech's claws. The real plan of vault Tech was not to simply provide a safe haven for humanity to wait out the horrors above ground. Instead, it was to use the vaults and their controlled environments as a canvas upon which to run a series of experiments, some seemingly innocuous and others downright evil by the judgment of any religion known to man. While there were a few vaults known as control vaults that actually held up to vault Tech's advertising, the vast, vast majority of vaults existed solely to test the limits of the human psyche, human sociology, and human physiology. In fact, Vault 15, the most famous vault in America, the vault whose inhabitants created the settlement Shady Sands, where one day President Tandy was born, who later went on to found and strengthen the new California Republic, was one of these experimental vaults designed to test the limits of humanity's tolerance for cohabiting with people of violently opposing ideologies. The vault was populated with political and religious extremists, and while some of these residents went on to do incredible things in Shady Sands and the NCR, the vast majority of residents gave in to the darker urges and formed three gangs, the Vipers, the Jackals, and most infamously, the Khans, and they went on to cause trouble for citizens and tribes in the western United States for generations. Compared to this experiment, though, a relative success, the other experiments conducted by vault Tech were pointlessly cruel, bordering on insane. While our records are incomplete and new details are coming in every day from uncovered archives, this is what we know so far. Of all the regions in our databases, the most complete information comes from the southwestern United States, which makes sense because, well, I'll get to that another day. While the vaults were created with the presupposition of safety from radiation and nuclear fire, Vault 12 had a different plan entirely to test the effects of radiation on live test subjects. The seal and safe vault door model number 343 in this location was designed with a fatal flaw. It wouldn't close properly. As a result, radiation from the outside in the form of irradiated ash and dust crept into the vault over time. Luckily, or perhaps unluckily, the inhabitants survived, in a sense. They transformed into ghouls, half-dead, half-living byproducts of radiation that resemble zombies from the old pre-war moving pictures. Most of them retained their sanity and went on to found Necropolis, the city of the dead, in Southern California. The residents of Vault 13 weren't so lucky. Information is sparse. But records say that the vault was meant to stay closed for 200 years in order to study the results of human isolation. 
This didn't quite go to plan, however, as the water chip installed in the unit was rated to only last a few decades, requiring replacement sometime in the 2160s. Rumor has it a certain vault dweller was selected by Vault 13's overseer to retrieve a replacement chip once several others failed to locate one, which they did but not before getting dragged into a conflict with the super mutants and their master, which is, well, let's not get off track. Not much is known about the resident of Vault 13 after the conclusion of the war with the master, but rumors circulate that they were personally responsible for saving the life of President Tandy of the NCR, and were later banished from Vault 13, and later went on to found the city of Arroyo and sired another influential wastelander who went on to do great things. Scavengers in the area say they saw vertebrates and heard gunfire near the entrance to Vault 13 years later, but little more is known about the fate of those residents. Vault 19 was among the more simple experiments into human psychology. What happens when you arbitrarily divide people into two separate but equal groups? Unfortunately, like many vault experiments, we have no answer to this question. Extraction of local terminal entries implies that tensions between the two groups were high, and paranoia was rampant among the occupants. It's unknown what effect the subterranean sulfur caves and their gases may have had on the residents, but most of the data, aside from several paranoid ramblings, are corrupted. As of now, the vault is completely unoccupied and appears to be abandoned and, as a result, makes a great potential hiding place for men on the wrong side of the lawman. The last vault in the West we have information on is the most tragic. Vault 11 was designed to test the wisdom and dedication to morality of mankind when given the most extreme incentive. Every year, a new overseer was elected by the vault residents. However, unlike every other vault in the United States, this overseer wasn't in charge of the day-to-day -day operations of the vault. Instead, they had one purpose, to die. Every year, one person was chosen to be killed. Residents were meant to do this or else face total annihilation. Eventually, however, the residents decided they'd had enough, and after many, many years of sending friends, loved ones, and neighbors down to be sacrificed, they decided they'd rather die than kill another resident. Upon choosing mercy for the overseer, the vault played a pre-programmed message congratulating the residents on their fortitude in the face of adversity. They were spared and never had to kill anybody for all those decades. The weight of this revelation was too much for the residents of Vault 11, and all but one man killed themselves rather than face the horrors of what they'd done. As was all too common with vault Tech's experiments on the psychology of mankind, Vault 11 left no survivors. Our records for the rest of the West and Midwest are incomplete, but moving over to New England, the malice of vault Tech continued into the higher-numbered vaults, with vaults like Vault 101 which were meant to test both how people would thrive under a dictatorial overseer and for extended times of exclusion, but the vault commanded to stay shut for an eternity. There are rumors that this vault has in fact opened more than once even, and that some of its residents have left to do great things in the capital wasteland of DC, but the exact exploits of this individual are unconfirmed. Vault 92 served as a testbed for what was called subliminal suggestion. The vault was populated with world-renowned musicians who were subjected to constant white noise with implanted suggestions. Instead of creating an army of super soldiers, however, these experiments created an army of madmen who eventually murdered all of the other residents in the vault. Nobody in the vault survived this riot and the halls of the vault lie as a testament to the failures of vault Tech, although it's reported that it makes an excellent place for Mirelurks to nest. Vault 95, meanwhile, was populated entirely with drug addicts, save for one lone vault Tech employee. At first, things went well, and through collective group therapy and rehabilitation, all of the residents kicked their addictions. But five years after the vault was sealed, a hidden cache of powerful drugs was unlocked. 
chaos erupted in the vault, with all residents either succumbing to overdoses or to the fists and bullets of their drug-addled friends. There's nothing there but dust now. Vault 75 could be summarized in one word. Eugenics. All vault residents over the age of 18 were executed by vault tech staff, while the children were subjected to vicious tests and torture. This is all we know, as, with most vaults, the records have rotted away and the residents are gone. Maybe it's better that way. These are just some of the most documented and most horrific experiments conducted by vault tech but dozens and possibly hundreds of other vaults are out there in the wastes, tempting all manner of wastelanders with promises of unspoilt goods from the time before the bombs dropped. But be warned, many of these vaults remain as unsafe now as they were the day they were created. There's rumors of vaults out there that still contain people from before the Great War, frozen in cryogenic storage to test the limits of human preservation. Vaults filled with vicious super mutants as a remnant of long-forgotten pre-war government experiments, or even a vault rumored to contain dozens of virtual reality computers, where the residents want for nothing and live in peaceful tranquility in a perfect virtual world. We don't know why Vault Tech betrayed public trust. Some say it was to find the limits of human psychology, sociology, and physiology so that they could leave this scorched earth for the stars above. Or maybe it was pure malice or hubris created by those driven mad at the prospect of life as they knew it, being under threat from nuclear annihilation. Whichever the case, the vaults exist, with reports pouring in every week of new ones, the most recent batch out of what used to be known as West Virginia, where it said there are thousands of super geniuses that roam the wastes looking for glory. If you're hearing this message, be careful. The creators of vault Tech may be dead, but their legacy is still alive. Some even say that vault Tech has ties to remnant pre-war government agents, a faction known as the Enclave that patrols the wastes occasionally in advanced power armor never before seen, abducting wastelanders for testing purposes, never to be seen again. But that, that is a story for another day.